Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And when I get on something, I can't get off of it. And I just keep playing and doing other things. So we made a straight line. And in the other videos, we use the distort tool. But I left out a couple of tools that's pretty cool. We're going to add, and what this is add, adding is adding notes. And if you'll watch this number right here, when we move it up, it's going to move to like 100. So one thing I left out in that previous video, let's say you wanted more zigzags. Instead of backing up, just add zigzags. Now we could reduce this, type in the number 50, and we're getting shorter zigzags. You know, click on this and it constantly lets it grow. So those are the two tools that you can use to change your zigzag. And then I thought it would really be cool to have these things spaced apart if you were going to make a wavy line. And I actually don't particularly like that. Um, it's like too sharp. So let's lower it to 45. And we need to go ahead and convert it to a curve so we can play with it later. And a, a good way, I'm going to use the transformation or yours is going to tra transform like mine. A good way to measure this, I used to bring in indexing lines, but if you if you will have snap two on and get your uh, rectangle tool, it'll snap to that box or to those nodes. So now you know that zigzag is 8307. You could also, it's 8307, so you don't have to measure it when you have this. Let's actually, for the video, let's make it eight inches tall. And I have my ratio locked, so it actually shorten it, but we can unlock that and make it whatever we want. We'll make it 70 wide. So we don't have to use the rectangle tool in this case, but then you can take it and, and remember we did the rounded corners. So let's go ahead and round these corners. First of all, I want, I actually want this down at the bottom so we can rotate it or mirror it or flip it this way. We already got a curve, so we're going to open up and we're going to leave our transformation open. I'm going to go to dockers and corners and we're going to, you can see it's already trying to round the corners. Let's do a little bit more. Let's do 0.75 this time, 0.76. That's fine. Hit apply. Get rid of that docker so we can see it better. Now it did shorten up our lengths of our wave. If that's what you were getting at. Here's just a little thing you could do to shorten up those nodes would be to bring in a line, just a two point line. And you could probably use a indexing line on this. So when you start moving first and then hold down your control button, a lot of times I already have it done. And if we go right here, it'll snap to that midpoint. Now we can take the virtual segment delete key and delete these two ends. And of course, get rid of that line. But now we need to know how tall this is again. So I've changed it. So we're going to, we're going to lock it this time. We're going to make it just six inches tall. So if you take your relative and you see, it's already got a negative six here. And if you have the relative position at the bottom and we make five copies, it's going to have five copies, six copies, a hundred copies, whatever you put in there, uh, going down. And it's a negative six because if you use a positive six, if you just type in six, it'll go up, up the scale and you can have it move over the other side, but let's go negative, negative six. And we got those waves. Now we can, we're already curved so we can select them and we'll go and I'm going to change this to points. I'm using somebody else's. Uh, let's go 36 points and there you have a wave. Let's make them, let's make them a blue. So it would kind of look like a wave. You know, there are a line I was right clicking. Uh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, I hope that helped just a little bit and thank you for watching.